Hello everybody and welcome to Resident Arcade, episode 72, the second episode in our current season. Thank you for joining us. My name is Chris and as usual I'm joined by co-hosts Matt and Dens. More importantly, we have our very first guest since the reimagining re or the relaunch or whatever we want to call it. Uh, he's been on the show a few times in its previous incarnation. Uh, so hello Thornton, how are you doing? Please introduce yourself and uh, stretch that or, or flex that e -peen. Tell us your gaming history in three words. <laughs> uh, in a concise, in a concise ma manner, I play Quake. <laughs> That's good enough. That's perfect, yeah. actually. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yes, pretty much. Uh, I've, uh, I've just been a PC gamer for as long as I can remember. Played FPS, RTS, console games now as well, as we'll get onto a bit later. Uh, yeah. Just lo stuff. lots of stuff, really. Good stuff. Well, thank you very much, and it's good to have you here. I'm sure it's we'll get into, back. into the detail. Um, and yep. now on to the show. Dens, seeing as though you've decided to join us again, can you please um, introduce or tell us, tell everybody what's coming up? Yeah, thanks, Chris. I heard the outtakes last week, don't worry. So in flashback, we'll be discussing all the genres. The newly released No Man's Sky Beyond update, indie sci-fi narrative adventure Tacoma, Roguelite 2D platformer Dead Cells and Nintendo Super Mario Odyssey for the Switch. We'll also be pretending to know everything about Clay. Is that right? Clay. Clay's Clay. Yeah, we'll go with Clay. Clay's recently re recently released from early access Space Colony. That's a lot of punctuation. That's, in that that's why you should read the script before you uh, before <laughs> we get going. I do it on the night or not at all. <laughs> Um, Space Colony Simulation, Oxygen Not Included, the upcoming Gears of War release, Gears 5, the post-apocalyptic RPG Stalker series, and hopefully we'll have time to talk about From Software's recent re-release re of Metal Wolf Chaos XD. And I don't see any hardware news in the document today. If anyone does think of anything at the end of the show and we've got time, we will talk about it, but otherwise probably not going to have any, any time today with having a guest as well. So let's get on to our competition. What are you selling? Each week, a host has the opportunity to try and sell a game to the rest of us. Um, it's slightly different this week because we've got a guest, but generally what happens is everybody gives a point if they would buy that game at full price and gives half a point if they would buy that game at the lowest price that it's been on sale. So full price game, £10, lowest price, £3, something like that. Um, this week, it is Danny's turn, and... I need to get the timer up. You've got two minutes to oh, sell us whatever you're selling as of now. Enter the dungeon. That's the game I picked. So it's a top-down pixel art roguelike dungeon crawler. Um, basically about dodging projectiles, but also you kill things with projectiles. Enter the dungeon. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, only local co-op, unfortunately. Uh, but it's a good couch co-op game. You can play as one of four characters, or you can play as a fifth if you're doing local co-op. Um, that's sort of like an extra if you do play couch games. Each character starts off with different weapons, i.e. the convict has like a sawn of shotgun, and the hunter has like a, uh, a crossbow. Uh, lots of kooky guns, a gun that basically is shaped like an R, and when you shoot it, it shoots the word bullet out as separate projectiles, uh, but there's lots, lots more guns like that. Really ridiculous ones, you know, guns that shoot like uh well, you can have a bullet that shoots guns there's a there's a gun that shoots <laughs> there's a gun that shoots uh like f barrels and like fish come out the barrels and stuff like that um it's hard as balls but it's uh, a really really like fast paced um sort of hardcore game cool environmental aids so you can like kick over tables and stuff to stop projectiles and you can cook over at uh, kick over not cook over kick over like a uh, desk with books on and they might um, reject a projectile, you might get lucky. Um, but the uh, two way street, that one, the enemies also have like little environmental aids, so they can be running around on minecarts depending on the tile set that you're in or something, and that makes it even harder. Um, boss at the, ev at the end of every floor. Uh, they can vary between bosses on each floor as well. So obviously if you die and you go back to the start, you play the first floor again, you might not get that same boss the same time around. Um, I've never completed it. It's too hard, but it's a good couch game. Co-op made the dif more difficult by the fact that you are bound to one camera. So if you're playing co-op, it does get a little bit more difficult, really. Um, overall, I enjoy it. I keep going back to it every once in a while. It's just, it's just good fun. I can only get to about floor three, Ten. but that's it. And I'll end there. I'll... Give oh. you 10 extra seconds. With with 10 Ooh. whole seconds left. Ooh, that confidence. Ooh, so yeah. confident. 
That was a good one. That I'll give you that. You 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 did a good job of getting ram. Did you prepare for that, Danny? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> of course, I prepared for that. I'm not Very going impressed. into oh. So right. questions. Right, we have to we have to have a disclaimer here. I'm afraid because mm. Matt revealed about two seconds before we went live um, that he's played the game. That's against the rules. I'm afraid, Matt. That's fine, and that's I'll my, my punishment. <laughs> so the well, I'll, I'll play. I'll play a part in that one because I did sort of drop it in there and just left it silent for a bit and didn't ask anyone. But I didn't think anyone looking at people's Steam libraries. I didn't see anybody with it, so I just kind of dropped it in there. So maybe I well, just you, missed you off, Matt. You didn't check mine, and that's the most important <laughs> one, isn't it? So Sorry. we're gonna we're gonna let Matt ask some questions, but Matt is not allowed to allocate points. So, so Danny literally doesn't have the bonus of having the guest here. <laughs> that the uh, that additional point that he could have gained from having a guest here, so it's it's Matt's well Danny's fault. I say it's Danny's fault. So oh, yeah. Matt, do you want to go first? And since you know you know something about the game, what have you got any questions? You got three. I've got three this week. Oh, so I think my first question would be just because you never really oh. mentioned it, what other platforms is it available for? Um, it's available for quite a few, I believe. I think it's even available for the Switch. Uh, a couple of, I think it's PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, I believe. But I mainly picked it up on the PC, so don't quote me on every single console. But it's available for quite a few. I couldn't name them individually, though. Thorn, Thorno, you got a question? Um, hmm. Do you know the game? Have you, can you picture it um, no. from Danny's... And I'm not a fan of roguelikes at all. So, <laughs> are, you, are you not a fan of the roguelike title, or are you not a fan of the 2D roguelike platformer? Is it like, um, what's it called? Bind of Isaac. It's basically Bind of Isaac with guns. Uh, I don't think I played Binding of Isaac, but I think it's... This is a platformer, isn't it, rather than a top-down... Oh, it platformer? No, it's not a platformer. This isn't a platformer, it's a... Uh... Oh. It's a top-down pixel art roguelike dungeon crawler. So if I quote the literal <laughs> sentence I typed out, it is top-down yeah, and into the dungeon. So yeah, I would say, isn't that just binding light? Uh, binding I think, Isaac. I think so. Yeah, if I recall screenshots correctly, it is like that, but with guns. Yeah. But mm. it depends. I think the guns make it. That's what that's what their game is. The guns. Yeah. Make it. So are the, uh, my my question first question is: Are the guns procedurally generated, or are they mm. are they step um, set? They are they are set, but there's a lot of them, so they're not going to be like Borderlands where you can get like slightly incremented guns upon a version of one you've already found. It is very much like they are all set. They all have the wacky names and stuff, but like where you might find those, you might find them in a merchant's or something one time, and then the next time you have something completely shit and you know unusable to you. Um, so they are randomly dropped and placed in merchants, but they're not ever really right. procedurally generated at all. Back to Matt, another question. So, Danny, can you talk me through how you would, a bit more specifically, kind of start a level and go through it to the boss? <laughs> no. Um <laughs> so hard. <laughs> Sorry, have I asked too Whoa. much there? I, I've got a better question. Tell me about your day. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> right, so it's been a while since I've played Enter the Gungeon, but there are objectives to each floor that you have to complete to be able to get to the boss room, as it were. Um, off the top of my head, I can't quite remember what they are. I think you have to complete certain rooms to get... You have to clear a certain set of rooms. Some have got something inside you have to activate, and then it'll unlock the boss door at the bottom. So you come down on the bullet lift, as it is. You'd start a level, and it would be a randomly generated tile set and a map. You know, it's not going to be the same every time. Um, you come down the lift, you, you proceed to all... Basically, you try and explore everything, because there's actually lots of hidden items in each floor such as weapons and stuff, but you also have to nip to a certain specific set of rooms that are generated for you, complete those, and then you would get an unlock to the boss door, and then you would proceed through to the boss door, which is just a large rectangular arena, um, and the boss inside of it, basically. All right. I can't remember if it's me or Thorn or next, but I'll ask you a question because it's one of my t t t t my tongue. Um, what, um, is it co-op? Can you play with other people? You can't play online, like you can't be sat at the end of your internet connection and play with somebody at the end of theirs, you would have to actually be on the same machine to play co-op. Um, yeah, so it's couch co-op. So it's couch, couch co-op, yeah. And is it good couch um, co-op, or is it just kind of hacked on? No, it's good. Um, as I said, in the whole selling it section, it is you are bound to one camera when you're playing co-op. Um, it's not like a split-screen scenario, so you do have to be quite careful when you're 
tackling things because if your buddy is trying to push up in a corner and it's sort of edging you down in a corner and you can't quite see everything that might be coming towards you, i.e. if you're in the bottom right, there's stuff that can still be firing from the bottom right. You can't see it. So you want to really stick quite close together and try and, you know, be an actual team rather than do your own things and take on your own sides of the room because you will come a cropper against things like that. That sounds exactly like against. Death Road to Canada's issue. Where if you if you get lost in the corner and someone yeah. you know the leader's buggered off somewhere, it's yeah. you're knackered. You're dead. Yeah, yeah, pretty much same with Enter the Gungeon. So okay. yeah, but yeah, it's good fun. I played it co-op a few times, so I would. Have not. Any other questions? Um, how much replay? Uh, uh, how much replay birth has it got? Uh, a lot if you can get past the frustration of dying a lot, which is pretty much its primary problem. So it's um, get good or get go home. Yeah, basically, yeah. it's a it's a chaotic bullet dodger, effectively. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it, it's got a lot of replayability because you don't encounter all the guns on your way through a playthrough. Yeah. You know, you've the, you, there's a lot more there to find out. So by doing it over and over again, yeah, you are sort of like kind of getting aggravated because you're dying so much and you're getting killed in bullshit ways but at the same time it's just like oh but if i keep playing i might find out some might find some cooler guns some cooler power-ups and stuff like that to, to get through the game with so it's got a it's got a fair bit of replayability it depends how you can you know if you can stick that replayability out though it's sort of one of those games where you're forced to replay it if you know what i mean it's not just a casual stroll through the game it's yeah. you've got to really put the effort in every time all uh, right fair enough so I'm going to drip feed you another question here to get some more information out of, about the game because I do <laughs> I have played it quite a bit. What progression is there? Because obviously it's an indie rogue like you're going to die a lot. But what progression is there between each game? What do you what what happens that makes the next game easier or harder? Just want to say something here. It's a rogue light, isn't it, rather than a rogue light? Sorry, which is the distinct difference. A rogue light usually has progression that you follow. You have some kind of progression through the deaths uh, yeah. so i'm presuming that that is what's going to happen uh, as far as i was aware there are certain skins you can get for your characters i've not played the game a massive amount i've probably come in at less hours than you but i played it a fair amount got down to like floor three four and then it's you know got killed but as far as i was aware there's skins for the characters you can unlock but i'm not sure if that's for completing the all the floors and then going back through it again with different skins um but there are some elements of persistence i believe there's a guy who hangs around near a lift, and I think he might sell things, but I'm not sure. What I'm not are you selling? sure. What are you selling? Yeah, that's exactly what he says. Um, but as far as I was aware, there was a skin. So if you've got more info on that, then feel free to share. No, 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 no. It's not oh, my competition. Not? I don't oh, want you to get enough. any points. Well, no, but I'm just <laughs> for the benefit of Resonance Arcade. So I, I have lost count of who's who's had. I know I haven't had three questions, but has I... Thorno. No, but I don't really have any other questions. Okay, I've got one other question. Is it absolutely mentally frantic? Can you tell what... You know, like when you play a, a manga fighting game or a Japanese fighting game and there's just so much shit going on on the screen, you've got no idea kind of what's going on. Is it like bullet that? Hell. Are there, like, numbers everywhere? Is it bullet hell or is it... It's bullet hell. There's not numbers everywhere. There's just a ton of bullets to the point where got 60 pairs of eyes to be able to catch them all it's it does get really really difficult is it impossible um, at times or is it just really hard from my skills perspective i would say yes it is it is luck of the draw sometimes with being able to push through i mean it's some some other people might have been able to get out of certain scenarios that i wouldn't have been able to get out of but you can get blindsided and just like, well, there was no path there. I just got, you know, RNG'd and got annihilated and there was nothing I could have done about it. But uh, other people might have differing opinions on that. But I'd say sometimes it does get you with the RNG. Okay. And I'd say get good. <laughs> of course you would. <laughs> so, Thorno, you said you haven't got any more questions? Nah. Uh, Matt, I can't remember if you've had three or not. I've had my three questions. All right. So that's it. So Matt doesn't get a choice to chance to uh, offer points. I... Based on what you've said, yeah, I'm I'm going to give you half a point. Uh, actually, I need, we need to know how much it costs, don't we? Yep. So ten ninety nine full price, uh, five pound thirty seven on the app at Microsoft Store as a, as a low. Um, sorry, as a medium, and then uh, a low is a three pound seventy five on the Steam sales. Right. Well, I definitely so, get it at three seventy five. Definitely. Yeah, that's worth a point on anything, really, isn't it? Well, maybe. I, I, what, I, what, I, when I look at roguelites these days, I look at them. Can I play them with my wife, and will she enjoy it? 
if I I probably won't play it too much on my own. I, I I demand a little bit more kind of complexity from my games when I play on my own. Yeah. Apart from Stardew Valley. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but half a point from me. Thorno, would nice. you buy it? Uh, no, it's they're just not my they're not my type of game at all. All right, that's good. Right. right, so you get half a point. Epic. That's a better start. No, it's a worse start than last time. It is, it is <laughs> horrific. Horrific. Okay, so moving on. Moving on to our next section, which is our flashback section. This is where we talk about games that we have played recently or we have a significant amount of experience in that we, we know enough about to chat about. Um, Danny. No, actually, Danny's just done a selling, so let's go for Matt to start off with. What do you want to talk about this week? So this week I've been playing Dead Cells, which if I can just refresh my memory on, no, I can't because I've not written any information down about it. So Dead Cells, it is a indie rogue light, I've learned my lesson, platformer. So you've got the standard kind of things that you'd expect in a rogue light. You've got the progression between, level, uh, between gameplay sessions. So you've got a lot of things to unlock, which persist. So you can unlock new items, you can unlock new mutations, which give you different abilities and let you kind of have a build to run with and things like that. And it's all, <clears throat> it's all 2D combat platforming. So in a nutshell, it's just, it's quite simple gameplay, but it changes, changes up a little bit every time. It's all randomly procedurally generated. And there's just a lot to offer in the game. There's a lot of different ways of playing it. There's a lot of different items to unlock. There's a lot of progression to be had. And it's just, I've really been enjoying it. Presuming like Thornor is, is already, you know, he's, he's already timed out with this. He's, he's not <laughs> interested again because it's another roguelike platformer. Well, the last one wasn't a platformer, but still. It, however, I've seen Dead Cells and it's been on my wish list for ages. I it, It's probably one I'll get soon because it looks right up my street. It looks a little bit like a st better style of uh, Rogue Legacy. Have you ever played that? I haven't nope. played that. Oh, again, Rogue Legacy is a, a yeah. wonderful roguelite. Um, I feel like I've got it, but I've not played it. Possibly, but I would highly recommend it. If you like roguelites, you, you, you basically start out as a... As a a knight and you get different classes that you can continually upgrade via some kind of upgrade tree uh, but every, it's very hard until you get good at it again uh, the bosses are absolutely insanely difficult until you have exactly the right build and it's which is randomly generated and then you happen to find you have to get through the dungeon far enough to find the randomly generated boss door in order to get to it but every time you as you get into it like we're level 150 on the current run through or something um but you you just get mega powerful by the end of it but it's still very very difficult even that because the, the the level the dungeons level with you but i really like the look of dead cells and it's got some wonderful reviews as well and like proper high high scores you know nine out of ten ten out of ten for from most of the and they're it's on all the platforms as well isn't it it is i've been playing it on pc but i am thinking about picking it up for the switch as well mm. it, it's just there's something about a game where you can spend like half an hour, 40 minutes just blitzing through a run of it. And it doesn't matter too much if you die because you've got that little bit of persistence with what you upgrade and things like that. It just, it, it makes it feel like you can have a quick game of it, but you've still got something out of it at the end of it. So you've still progressed through the game, even though you've got to the end and died. So is it quite easy to uh, to get into then? Because that's it's something I love about uh, it being on a, a Switch and just Switch game in general. Just being able to pick it up and just be like, oh yeah, let's quickly play this while cooking dinner or whatever like that. Even at work, I take it to work with me every day. Um, but I do remember seeing Dead Cells uh, a few years, but I don't know how long ago it came out. Um, a couple of years now, maybe. But it does look pretty. And if, it, if it's a game that's quite easy to get into and just pick up and play for a bit, probably end up picking it up and checking it out, depending on how much it is. I think roguelites, uh, uh, good, really good roguelites, a few and far between. There are a few that I've played that, that they're unforgiving, unforgiving when you play them. They're too difficult for them to be enjoyable and they, they don't get, they don't give you the right amount of reward every time you play it. But things like Rogue Legacy and by the look of it, Dead Cells as well and Death Road to Canada, they give you enough enjoyment while you're taking you know, playing the actual run through that you're doing at that moment. And you're right, that quick death just makes it, makes it, uh, eat, sorry, not the quick death, the kind of, you can do a quick run through doing something while you're doing something else. It just makes it, it gives you that replayability. And even Enter the Gungeon, it's been on my list for a while. 
I'm not sure. I can't even remember what it looks like, to be fair. It's been on my list for that long. But it's the kind of game that I would like to just jump into and then jump back out. Well, the, yeah. the nice thing with Dead Cells is um, at the end of every level, you're given two doors once you kind of piss it. There's like a little holding zone between each level where you can, um, you can upgrade your items or you can um, upgrade your mutations or use your cells that you pick up to kind of like i said for the progression progression thing but um the nice thing is when you get to there you're given a choice of two doors which will be open depending on two things the first one is how quickly you did the last level the second one is how many enemies did you defeat without being injured so if you want to speed run the game and just blitz through everything and get through it as quick as possible you get you're, you're rewarded for doing that with a new item you get to pick between two items when you go into the door or if you do the slower, more methodical gameplay, you're again rewarded for getting through it without taking damage. So it's it lets you play how you want to play, essentially. If you want to, you know, be slow with it and methodical and take your time, then it it rewards you for that. But if you want to be like me and just, you know, I have no patience whatsoever, I'm just gonna blitz through this. Oh, I've died, start again, go, died, start again. Then you can do that. It's it's completely up to you how you want to play it. Is it do you have to build skill? Can you build skill or is it just just get to the end? You can build, well, there are three skills and I don't remember exactly what each one is, but they, they're they all color coded and they apply to different weapons that you pick up. Oh, I, so meant like, you mean... I meant like building get good skill, you know, are you, are you, do you have to get good at it in order to enjoy it or can you, is there a progression in terms of learning or is it just a really arbitrary kind of fighting platformer that you, you I... just get to the end of the level? No matter I mean, what? it's. It, there is a level of skill to it, but it's more, again, it depends how you're playing the game. So like when you first play it, you're probably not going to be dodging too much. And th like, there's a, a dodge that gives you iframes, so you're not going to take damage. You get used to using things like that. There's a shield, which you can use to parry enemies. Again, you, when you go for the first time, you're probably going to be quite slow progressing through everything. But the more you play it, the more you get used to the mechanics and how the enemies move and everything else, the quicker you can progress, so the quicker you want to progress. So you might start out aiming for the, well, I want the door that gives me the reward for killing 30 enemies without taking damage. But the better you get at the game, the more you just want to be like, right, I'm just going to sprint through it as quick as I can and get to that other bonus door instead. Right. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, you could have sold that to me next week. I'd have, I'd have, I'm getting that, but it's on my wish list already, <laughs> so you couldn't have had points. Wah. Yeah. Nah. Anyway. Um, all right, moving on then. Um, Thornton, our guest, what uh, what do you want to talk about? Uh, well, I've been playing um, Super Mario Odyssey this week, which... Started is... it recently, or have you been yeah. playing it a while? No, I've started it recently. Um, I don't usually play console games. I really struggle to sit down and play console games now. Um, or I have done, at least, for a quite some time just because i've got a pc and it's like well i've always been in the mindset pc is better and I'll, I'll just play pc uh the only games i can only really play on consoles are like crash bandicoot the, the old styled games um Master Race, i never played you know. i never played mario when i were a kid and this is the first mario game i think i'm actually going to complete um you enjoying it then yeah really enjoying it i didn't it's... expect you to say that to be fair i thought you yeah had, I thought you'd... it's it's an absolutely fantastic game. It's it's made me really think, because uh, I remember trying to play Mario 64, and I'd never really enjoyed Mario 64. Um, and then I've just kind of started playing Mario Odyssey, and it's like, oh, I'm kind of getting in. It's a, it's a 3D platformer, so it's a little bit, movement's a little bit awkward with the camera sometimes. Are you using the so Pro it, Controller or are you using the Joy-Cons? I'm, I'm using the PS4 controller. Um, All right. So <laughs> I'm using a, an 8-bit door connector. Okay. Um, so you did, can connect PS4 controllers to that? Because I like the PlayStation controllers. Try the Joy-Cons. That game um, in particular is good yeah, with the Joy-Cons because you can... You, you can, you've got all the movements. Yeah, you can you've left got to right... All the, yeah, you still can use you can still use it with the PlayStation controller. Well, you know you can with the pro the the um the Switch Pro controller, but there's a specific yeah. move, um, which is I think is spin move, that it's much better to use the Joy Cons for. And I found overall, I use like the Pro controller or PS4 pad or whatever you want to mm -hmm. use for games like Breath of the Wild. But the Mario, I found much better, more accessible with with the Joy Cons. Which I give it a try then. Yeah. 
Because the right. I've noticed is... there's a few that it, few movements seem like to be a bit easier with the, uh, you know, the flicks and things. But give yeah, we'll, we'll give it a try. See, see if you're late now. You. I, I think I'm. I don't, I don't know how far I am. I'm six, seven worlds in. I don't know how many more there is. Yeah, you haven't got all the stars though. I'm presuming in. No, I yeah. don't know if I'll 100% it, because I'm not really a completionist. Okay. Uh, although it is it is a game you should really 100%, isn't it? I, I, there's an argument for either of them. I've, I think I've 100%ed all of the normal stars, but once you've done all the normal stars, all the proper challenging st uh, st not stars. It's not stars in moons. that game, is it? Moons. Moons, moons yeah. Um, yeah. All, all of the proper challenging moons unlock and some of them are a bitch a proper bitch to get wow. um like this is where the it's the same with super mario um 64 and gal um not was it galaxy galaxy yeah and galaxy, galaxy 2. and sunshine i never played yeah. sunshine but the galaxy and galaxy 2 they were exactly the same you completed it you got all the stars and then they unlocked another 150 stars or whatever and yet you had to really proper challenges i mean i get some of them but Rich. some of them you're just like no <laughs> chance mate nah nah it's just annoying nah. me this level now nah. can't be asked. <laughs> not not in the, nah, I'm not out about that but um it's it's really cool how each level is actually different um and there's like a new game mechanic each level so in the first uh worlds you get the hat so you start using the hat and you can you um you flick it out and it can control certain things and certain enemies and do certain actions um <laughs> 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 and then the second one I don't know what I, what you do in the second one now. Um well you start uh, off in the cap world which is the, it's the cap world like the and then dark area isn't it and then the second world yeah. is Yeah. I think it's the Me is it the Mexico one? No, that's that's about 3. That's like in. 3. Is it not the jungle one that you that you go to after that where you control yeah. the T-Rex. Yeah. No, that's that's the one I'm on at the moment and I'm like I'm when I first saw that, I was like, oh, great. What's that in the distance? Oh, that's a T-Rex. Why is there a T-Rex in a <laughs> Mario game? This isn't right. Um, I've also oh, seen sweat, mate. real humans and cars. I'm like, it's like Uncanny Valley, like when you saw um, Sonic, like Sonic Adventure with with humans. It just doesn't quite sit right. It feels wrong. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I've forgotten the name. It's a while since I played it, but I played it pretty much all the way through, and I, I enjoy. I do like Mario games. I've always been a fan, but the three D games, they're very different. But you're still intrinsically Mario. They are, yeah. you know, there's something about that world that's. When you think about everything that you do in a Mario game, you think, really, how who comes up with these ideas? Why do they think how how could this how could a plumber and a mushroom go together? What? <laughs> Well, it's Japan, isn't it? I know, really? but there's just no sense. It's like the fucking T-Rex thing, you know? A little bit of Googling, and I'm sure I can show you how a plumber and a mushroom can go together. Probably. Have either of you two, Danny or Matt, played Odyssey? No. Yeah, I've completed it. It's fantastic. Loved have it. You, have you done the the extra moons? No. Have you done any extra moons? Did you start nah. doing them and then just nah. can't be asked, or did you just... Uh... No, I, I, I finished the main game and I started doing the challenge level at the end, and I got like sixty percent through that, and just thought, I, I can't, I'm not, I can't be bothered. I don't want to get good at Mario. Yeah, I'm a bit the same. Some of them, yeah. I've done a few, but I mean, it's more about just picking it up because I've only got the two games on the Switch. It's just picking it up occasionally and having to play. But I'd rather be playing Breath of the Wild. I've got to be honest. I'd rather be just. That, even that's though, the beauty of it, though. You oh, can just pick it up and. Whereas Star. Breath of the Wild, I've been trying to get back into Breath of the Wild, and I'm like, right, so I haven't played this for about two or three weeks. I don't remember any of the which, controls. Which buttons? Right, start again. Magnetize again? Which one, <laughs> yeah. which one do I press to, to block? And, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what we mean. It's great, though. I'm, gl I'm glad you're into the, uh, the Switch. Have you got, you've got a PS4 as well, then? Yeah, I have. And do you play many games on that, or is that...? Um, well... Funny story because Crash Team Racing just came out. Obviously, I, I, Crash Team Racing is Sony PlayStation originally, and I grew up playing Crash Team Racing. So I thought, well, I might actually buy it on the PlayStation. And then I just thought, well, I'm not going to really play the PlayStation that much. I play my Switch more than anything. Plus, playing 
crash on the go. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So I bought it on the the Switch, and I've I've absolutely loved it. Um, I don't really play many games on my PlayStation. I've got quite a few, like Horizon Dawn and things like that. I've gone back um, to that at the moment, playing that last I've, night. Actually. I need to play that one because um, friends have played it and said, yeah, it's brilliant. Uh, Uncharted. Um, <laughs> God, what else have I got? I want to play, go through, play Metal Gear Solid, not strictly PlayStation Four, but uh, go through and play those again. Wonderful. That's the first time yeah. you've nodded, Chris. Wonderful game. <laughs> well, the thing is, it Uncharted. Is. The whole, I've told you my opinions about the Uncharted world. That, that it's just too linear for me. It, there's not much. It's just, it's just a story, and and I'd rather watch a film. I can watch Indiana Jones, you know. For that <laughs> yeah, kind of shit. Heavy Rain was same for me. I, I, Everybody said, oh, I'll play Heavy Rain. And it's not linear, but I was just like, I, it, it just bores me a little bit. I, I actually quite liked Heavy Rain because it was different. And I liked, I always like to explore mm. different types of games and exploring different concepts and different ways of playing computer games, not just, yeah. you know, standard. I did, I did think for that for that aspect, it was an incredibly interesting game. I mean, it's kind of like Shenmue in that respect. Uh, very, you know, um, it was like, the next evolution of Shenmue, quite you know, uh, quick time events sort of thing, but mm. it just wasn't. The story didn't quite get me. I mean, I Did might play it? it again, but no, I mm. it, it was quite a few years ago as well. So I have now got the re. I think the remastered it, and I picked that up at the PlayStation because uh, I got it. I got like quite a few games when I bought the console, mm. so I might end up going back and playing it because now that I've can actually. I've got a setup where I can actually see the TV. Uh, I'm not too far back. Um, I've I've started playing a lot more console games, and I'm starting to enjoy it a bit more just because mm. you sit down and pick it up and play. Do yourself a favor and do Heavy Rain over like Beyond Two Souls because that that story is yawn fest. Yeah, like, Heavy Rain actually is does have a very satisfying conclusion, although you kind of figure out what's going on by the end. But and you might have probably yeah. you might have probably already had it spoiled by by the internet to be honest, but. Does it turn out that the rain probably really haven't heavy? I forgot. So <laughs> there's rain in the last scene. Oh, <laughs> is it heavy? It's rain, heavy. It's, it's pretty heavy rain. In fact, that's a fundamental part of the story. But oh, obviously, it's heavy, oh, it's heavy, Doc. It's heavy, and it's heavy in more more than just that context as well. Heavy, dude. Yeah, it's good. Oh. I like it personally. Don't bother with the move version, though. Fuck that. <laughs> well, you probably haven't. Anyway, right. So moving on, Danny Tacoma. Something I. Has been sitting in my Steam library for a while. I had a gist of what it was about before even playing it. I knew it was like a story based, just it's almost like a walking sim, walking sim, and go find out what the story is, kind of thing. But it's in space, and that kind of kind of brightens it up a tiny bit for me. You know, I, I looked, do like I looked it up on my Steam library because I was like, well, I've never heard of this. I've actually got it on my, my wish list. Don't know why, mm-hmm. don't know how I've ever <laughs> added it to my wish list. And on top of that, it uh, it's got. It, it games that it's like prey. <laughs> Absolutely nothing like it from my look, never, looking at the video. Never been anything like prey. No. So it's basically the Tacoma. Tacoma itself. It's a lunar transfer station. So it sits between Earth and our Moon and helps ships pass through and resupply and what have you. Something went wrong with this station, and you're mm. a subcontractor that's sent out there to figure out what went wrong. And the way that the the game is done is it's sort of like entwined with the story. The corporation who run Tacoma Station, you have to sign up. The, all the crew had to sign a waiver away for you to be constantly monitored on that station, including your positional whereabouts, audio, and all that stuff. Convenient, isn't it? Convenient. <laughs> Lots so of what the game, the game is basically, yeah, as I say, like a walking simulator, sort of floating simulator in some areas like one area you actually get to like play basketball but that's you know about two minutes of fun and then it's like all right let's do this then um and you're basically going around to find out from like three i'd say roughly about four days prior to the event happening to the event and what happens after that is you're just going around and collecting data and going through the ship systems and putting it so you're given like a it's not even a mechanic really it's like a book Slash, slash tablet thing that's got an interface on it. You slide, slot it into a uh, a module, so it might be the personnel module, engineering module, or something else. And then you're basically that's your progress for that that section as it was. 
and you can go back and check on it. But you basically have to go into that said module and retrieve all of the data. And it's basically telling you a story through recordings and sort of movements of people. And you can like rewind it and fast forward it if you've missed bits and what have you. You don't actually see any people. It's more of a, an outline. Yeah. Like an almost like an augmented reality, like a wireframe outline of said person. Uh, some parts are corrupt and there's a lot, there's probably a lot more depth to, to it in finding out all of the little intricacies because a lot of stuff's corrupted and when you try and retrieve data it says failed and stuff like that but i don't have the inclination to go and find out why it's corrupted now i fix it have you completed fact, it i've completed it all the way yeah so you it's... know the conclusion i, I know the conclusion um i would obviously don't don't spoil it for anybody no, i'm not gonna but... spoil it it's i would say that if you're just gonna play through it and not delve too deep into it you probably get about an hour and a half two hours out of it so it's mm. not a whole lot of time to go through it. It's really short. Interestingly, it's done by the same devs that did Gone Home. And I've played all the way through Gone Home. And by the sounds of it, it's just a different mechanic, but very similar. You go through and you pick up, you read things in, in a house, you pick up tapes, you you play you play the tapes, you listen to yeah. recordings, you, and eventually you end up in the attic and it reveals the final part of the story. And it's like, oh, oh, right, oh, that's interesting. Oh, right, never playing that again then. So, yeah, with... The with those types so gone home sounds very much like obviously using today's mediums of reading data back to yourself using tapes and stuff i think the why uh, tacoma was so palatable for me was because it does it in the space setting so a lot of tech and a lot of cool stuff is going on to give you this information back like you can click on somebody in a situation and find out what might have been on their like personal device at that time messages to other people so there is a lot of that similar reading through stuff finding out how people are feeling at a set moment in time and seeing how that progresses i um, feel i view these walking sims as kind of interactive novels in a they way are, really you, yeah you're following the story and but you're also um but like bandersnatch you almost choosing where to go next you're not choosing the output but you're choosing to go down this path and discover this part of the story first. So it's it's a bit disjointed. Tacoma is a bit more linear than that. Okay. So it doesn't allow you to just go into whatever module you want. It does force you down a set path right. first. Um, within each module, you can change in which way you, you might have done it backwards and you like have to be like, oh, shit, I've done it wrong and go back and redo it. But in terms of like yeah the story unlocking this the sections of said story is chronological and it the game forces you to do it that way right um, but it, I, it kept me entertained enough for the period of playing it i didn't put it down i just played straight through it, it kept me just hooked enough just to keep seeing what did happen in the end and it was okay so you say about two okay. or three hours two or three hours um you probably get a bit it? more out of it um i don't know actually because it's been that it's been sat in my steam library for that long you probably got it in a humble bundle. i got it in a humble bundle likely yeah that's yeah. gonna be what it is but um it's one of them games that i would probably pay a couple of quid for you know because yeah because it's so short and there's not much replayability you know exactly i don't think i would go through you know go through it again now that i've played through and understand the main story i mean it wasn't engrossing enough and didn't have any twists or turns so i've that played the main story didn't sorry that the main story didn't explain to me so i don't feel the need to go back and delve deeper if you get me it's there's sort of a few games that i've played that have been like that and there's one in particular that i have played a few times through or a few actually in particular i played a few times through and they've all been done by the same person um the stanley parable which is not as linear but that is done in a way that is actually fun and engaging and funny you know and it's good and I, and I tend to sit my friends in front of it who've never heard of it before and get them to play it and watch them and and what and it's really interesting kind of a social experiment to see what they do i had a, a friend the other day um who i put it in front of and he just went down everything that the narrator said every single path he followed and i was like what are you doing <laughs> there's a door there that's not it's open that you just tell it and I, I, it might even have been my wife doing it actually no no she didn't i think she did the first door she went down it and then she thought well what if i do this you know that's the interesting part of the yeah well, my friend he honestly just kept going round in circles doing the same thing that the narrator said I'm, do you not see that door there it's blatantly <laughs> a big open space to, and this he's, he's a very boring game chris why am i playing it yeah i don't like <laughs> Um, but the other one is done by the same guy. There's two other ones. There's one, the beginner's guide, which is much more linear and more abstract and more arty and more what the fuck am I playing here? 
um, uh, more of a walking sim, less interesting. Uh, but it's got an interesting way that the narrator tells it in an interesting way. I'd recommend it for a small amount of money. I wouldn't recommend it because it's not really replayable. But then there's also da Dr. Langerstein and the Tiger and the Diamond or something. I have to find the stock, the, the name of it. But that's, um, have you heard of a guy called Simon Amstel? He's a, yeah. a comedian. I find him extremely funny. He was doing, he did uh, Nevermind the Buzzcocks for a while. Um, and he, he narrates it, but it's also Justin Roiland who does, um, who created Rick and, Rick and Morty, yes. And It's on your t-shirt. It is, yes. <laughs> um, other t-shirts are available. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, Rick and Morty, uh, he's in that as well. And I think they collaborated on it. The, the game developer uh, got Justin Roiland in. I can't remember if it was before Rick and Morty or after, but he's like, he's kind of a side part of it, but it's it's Rick and Morty's voices that he does all the time, but it's not them as the characters. He blatantly doesn't have much range, put it that way, <laughs> as an actor. Um, but it's a good story and it's free as well. Um, let me find it for you, Dr. Dr. Something. But while I'm doing this, oh, it's my turn. Oh. <laughs> You're getting sidetracked, Chris. <laughs> Dr. No, no, I can't find it. So just with Tacoma, is there any any kind of gameplay other than walking around clicking on things? Um, figuring <laughs> out <laughs> codes to doors that would be otherwise locked. That's it. But then you click the code on the doors. Yeah, right? yeah. or you can even, ooh, imagine this, guys, use Whoa. your numpad to enter it. <gasps> Whoa. Amazing. Now, nah, there's really not a lot apart from you can click up you can click on something to grab it you know like skyrim style and uh but you can bring it up to your face and twirl it around to try and scour for information but nothing beyond that really it kind of makes me feel like i'd rather play viscera cleanup detail and get a similar yeah, experience you, at I least mean, there's there's bloods in the different different places and you can walk it over <laughs> you know walk it in the, the wrong corner and who's tracked over my fucking clean area <laughs> mom <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Langishkov, the tiger and the terribly cursed emerald, a whirlwind heist. What a Terrible name. name. But, <laughs> but honestly, a it's a great, for a walking sim, it's probably the one of the most, one of the funniest. It's only a few hours. I've played 77 minutes and I've played it through three times, put it that way. So okay. it's not wow. very long at all, but you do get slightly different things every time you play it. Um, but it kind of explains it. And it's, it's just funny. It's a good, it's a good bit of, you know, it's, it's a laugh. Yeah, I recommend it. So anyway, my my game for today is uh, No Man's Sky Beyond, the recent update that got released. I thought I'd give it a go. Um, I actually jumped in for the second time uh, in history with a friend. Um, someone was already playing it and I saw him and I thought, well, I'll jump in there. There's a, a guy we're going to have on the show in the future called uh, Leon, who does another podcast. He, um, I jumped in and he said, oh, I've just, all my other friends have just dropped out because it's so buggy. We just cannot play together. It is so horrendously buggy. He crashed about five times while we were running it. They've they've re they've done things like they've removed the pre-caching on the loading screen. I don't know if you've played it, but there's a quite a su significant period of time that you have to wait on the loading screen. Yeah. It says loading pre-shaders or something like that, loading shaders, and they've removed that. And now that does it while you're playing, and it's unplayable because you just do, uh, 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 oh, while yeah. it's. Uh. But that's just, that's just that's not even half of it. There's things like people falling through the world. There's people crashing. There's now this central hub where you go, uh, like um, um, trying to think like a PlayStation Home type thing, where you'll you'll go to congregate and all get missions together. So we got a mission together. It was like two hundred and fifty thousand credits to to complete this mission. Dead easy mission, like all the others. You leave the hub and you go and go to a planet and then come back to the hub to hand it in. Simple as that. Left the hub, he crashed. We got back, I went down to the planet, started doing the mission, or rather waited for him to, to come back and load in. He wasn't logged onto the quest, so he didn't get any of the benefits from it. So you can imagine how annoying that is, considering how much effort it is and how much time it takes to get from one place to another in that game sometimes. Um, there's not enough in the update for someone who's played it for like nearly 200 hours, like myself, to make me go back. Yeah. It's... It's a. I like it. I like the game. I'm not bashing it. I, I'm not a fanboy, but I I enjoy it. They've added cooking, which I can't mm. be asked with. I mean, I, I like cooking in some games. Uh, I like crafting. There's just picking uh, the, your berries. Yeah, the, but they've <laughs> they've 
they've done things like what are the oh 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 here we go oh, oh my god there was this one touched the nerve one thing smiling there's in in the game you pick up uh, navigation data and previously the navigation data or at least on the next update which was the last update um the the navigation data you used uh, like a, a signal booster which you just deployed it was like a deployable on a, on a planet you deploy it down use the navigation data and then you can choose one of like four or five different options and each of those options has a random chance for you to find something like a crashed spaceship or a freighter or a house or something like that now what they've done with that is they've said no instead of doing that now what you need to do this is a completely shit idea and i don't know why they've done it now you have to do you have to go to a space station hand this navigation data into a dude um he gives you a map like a, another item basically when you go down onto the planet's surface, you can use that map and it randomly generates or it randomly gives you a waypoint to one of about 20 different things. So it's it's dif it's really difficult now to find crashed ships if you're grinding for sh you know for a better ship. It's really difficult to find almost anything in the game. And there's other things like the blueprints they've unlocked um there's there's They've made a lot of the blueprints and the grind for the blueprints easier because in the Nexus, in this multiplayer hub, there's now loads of merchants that you can go and speak to. Um, and they they basically, there's a tree of all of the things like your exosuit um, upgrades, you no longer have to grind for those. Your ship upgrades, everything like that. It's all They're all set up in trees, so you can just basically spend nanites, which are like the sub-currency in the game that you use to, uh, you get on top of credits. and You, you get them as rewards for quests and stuff. Um, and you can just grind for nanites, get all your upgrades but there's one set of upgrades that you have to randomly f you have to find a manufacturing facility on a planet which is now extremely difficult because of this plotting this new navigation data mechanic when you find it you have to unlock the code which is arbitrary again it's just like a number sequence you, you put in you either get it right or you don't when you've unlocked it you then have a choice to choose one of these upgrades if you've got the right amount of um salvage data on you or something if you don't have it, you don't have a chance to go back and try again. You have to find another station. So if you don't have enough salvage data, so you need three for this particular upgrade, and you don't know until you get there how much you need either. And it's just like a it's it, a mental grind fest to get these, like a fucking salt refiner or something or a salt displacer. And it's just really annoying. But the, the last time I played the game, they changed all the mechanics and all of my upgrades came off my... my um, character and I had to grind for them all again and that hasn't happened this time I've still got everything but and I'm lucky in that because I've played it with this character I've got loads of things but I'm just like it's on, a fully guys. released game isn't it oh yeah it's been yeah. fully released it's since a while why are they why are Two they changing years? stuff so heavily then well every, every I've come back to play it three times I tried it again this update I think this is the third time I've tried it and every time I've tried it, so I tried it on release, they released, I think, base building, I tried it then, and then I tried it on this one. So yeah, three times. And it's different every time. The intro, how you actually do the, the tutorial, as it were, is, is different. And then how the Nexus is and the hubs work are all different every single time. And it's, it, like you said, Chris, it's just such a grindy game. It's. I found, it's, I found some uh, of the grind okay. Um, I don't mind. It can be quite fun, and it's a very it is a chill game. I do. It's beautiful. It's a very well. If you've got to put everything on high, yeah, and then you just <laughs> there's so many there's so many Jurassic Park moments. So when you're just looking over the um over the horizon and thinking, oh look at that, yeah, and then you it just comes and absolutely up. destroys you. Oh, that too, yeah. <laughs> Oh, this, oh, there's like, it's got baby legs. Yeah, I've seen, this, <laughs> yeah. I've seen these like massive elephant bodies with tiny little baby legs and a face like that, you know, like a penny. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was but, looking at, I wanted, to, I think I asked you, I was just look, wondering if it was worth picking up because I'd never got on the hype train with No Man's Sky. Never even entertained it because I've heard of all the bad press about it. And then it seems to have sort of stabilized. But if they're continually changing it like they are, it kind of makes me feel, especially with the bugs you mentioned. It's a fascinating game. It's a fascinating mechanic, and although they have taken shortcuts with certain things like transitioning between a planet and outer space, that was a, a major... Um, it's, it's really, really arbitrary. Like you literally take off 
point your ship upwards and you're out into space immediately. You know, there's no there's no event. You know, it's a non-event. But then again, you do so you you land on so many planets that that there was a bit of wonder about. Oh, I want to. I started off naming all of my planets and all of the discoveries that I found, and there's fifteen f- uh, fauna on every planet, and God knows how many flora. Um, and I'd rename everything. I just can't be asked with that. But it's extremely difficult to manage the uploads because you have to upload them to get extra nanites. There's no way to upload everything that you've discovered. So if you discovered like 50 things and you haven't uploaded, you have to go through every single item on a really slow... It's not slow. It's just slow when you're doing 50 of them. Um, yeah. Slow interface that... The same applies for like like that navigation data. I'm going to go back to that fucking navigation data. When you sell, when you go and exchange the navigation data for, for maps with the merchant up in the space station, you have to click on him. He says something. He says something else. And he says something else. And there's no way to skip any of this. Then you get to choose an option. And if you click on it wrong, you have to start again. <laughs> and if you click on it right, you have to start again. Option one fucking menu and it's like it's just and you have to do it for, so say, say you've just got you've got 15 or 20 of them you have to do that 20 times and each time you and then when you use these items these these um maps they're just the quick use you know you use them and sometimes it shoots up into the sky and it scans the local area like it used to with the the uh, stations that you deploy and then it, it's it's just a really there's just so, such a bad user experience. That's the best way of ex- describing it. It, it could yeah, be the designed. UI's not great at all. They've they've not done QA on it. They've not done any no. UAT on it. You know, it's it just no. let people it's... see it and tell you what they want. What's wrong with it? Yeah. It it seems to me like they've been so focused on the bigger vision of like we want to have this many planets and we want it to all be procedurally generated. And Ten trillion else. planets. Ten trillion planets. <laughs> Quintillion. But our UI is garbage. Quintillion. Sorry. It's something like eighty-three quintillion planets. Nobody. I mean, yeah. I've I've seen twice. I've seen somebody's planet, and once I sent him a message on Twitter and I said, "Oh, is this you?" Because I just kind of guessed his Twitter username, and it was. It was the guy. You know, I luckily had the same username as he did in Steam, and he was like, "Oh my god, I thought no one had ever seen my planet." I went, "Yeah, it's shit," and then never spoke to him again. <laughs> I can't believe you found planet Nobed. Well done. <laughs> It's shit, mate. Take it down. I've got. I mean, the thing is, as well, I'm so far away from the center of the universe. I've been playing for 200 hours. I've only recently, I'd say, that maybe in the last 30 hours, started focusing on getting closer to the center. And if you've set your base up quite far out, you start there, and then you might need to go and do a bit of grinding on some local galaxies. You're you're struggling to get anywhere near the center you can teleport back and they've made that a lot easier now although there's crashes involved in that as well now um right. so you teleport back to where you were but you can't quite remember how close you were to the center there should be a much better user experience there with like telling you this is the closest planet to the center if you want to go that way it's the only part of the missions there's like four strands i think four main mission strands it's the only one i haven't finished which is get to the center of the universe and i bet when i get there i'll be like oh that wasn't worth it. <laughs> I was constantly getting lost on it, just being like, well, if I, I, where I'm, I move forward a bit and like, right, so where's my base? <laughs> Shit. Uh... Not bad, but I, can see, I can see where you're coming from. They've improved not, a lot of not, things. It wasn't but... intuitive, I found, at all. It just wasn't, like you said, it was bad user experience. They've, they've improved things like you can carry a lot more items now as well. Instead of carrying yeah. 250 of a resource, you can 10, carry 1,000 now. Is it 10,000? 10,000, 10, yeah. Oh, that's oh, realistic, good. isn't it? 10,000 oxygens. Well, I mean, <laughs> if, two, if you can carry 250 bars of steel and that's not realistic, well, I'm sorry, Chris, I don't know what to say about realism for you. <laughs> bars of steel don't exist in the in this no, no, in no, no Man's Sky yeah. universe. Sorry, space steel. Ooh. Uh, space. <laughs> it, it, overall, I will keep going back to it. That's the thing. It's got me, but it's so annoying that the changes that they're putting in there if it was an mmo or i paid for it i would have cancelled my subscription if i hadn't bought it at a fairly decent price when i got it i think i got it for 15 quid or something and i yeah, thought I think I did as well that yeah. was worth it for the time i don't know what it costs now but i would not pay 30 40 50 quid for it it's it's janky best way to describe it janky yeah i mean good on the devs for sticking at it for what two years you know the, uh... the yeah, three like now. 
Well, they're if they still... didn't, that was their careers over. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be fair, with state of game is, is the careers over already? Is that why they're sticking to it? Because they can't go anywhere else. <laughs> Possibly. I think the thing is with indie developers is indie developers develop for themselves. They don't do it so they can get a job at a bigger company. They do it because they want to develop games. Um, I, mean, I say that, that's a general sweeping statement, but I think that generally is the case. Um, it's, it's not about that. It's about they have to maintain this in order for their fans to remain fans and then to build a bigger fan base. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's made money out of it. There's no, there's no doubt about that. I mean, the there are fairly... Yeah, that's what everyone was mad about, wasn't it? Loads of people repurchased it, and then it didn't turn out to be what they promised kind of thing. Wasn't that the gist? Well, people likened him to Peter Molyneux, which isn't <laughs> yeah. a good thing at all. <laughs> that name keeps coming up. But yeah, it's only, it's only 20 quid at the moment. And I wouldn't pay 20 quid for it. I don't think I would either. If I knew, Well, if I knew what yeah. I know now... But I've played 200 hours. That's a quid. A quid an hour. Yeah. 10p yeah. an hour. I don't know. I can't work time out anymore. <laughs> yeah, we've ten, just ten really failed hour. on that one. Yeah. yeah. If it's if it's if it's twenty. It's less quid. than a quid an hour. <laughs> if, X if money. <laughs> quid, quid an hour is usually my what I say is getting your money's worth. It's 10p yeah. an hour. It's got to be 10p because a it, quid an hour will be 20 hours. Yeah. Anyway, but I, that's what I mean. A 10p for an hour of gameplay, I'm bad. happy with that. Yeah. What's your money's worth? But I'll still yeah, fucking complain. <laughs> yeah. But it is I paid 10p like... for this hour. <laughs> it is yeah. a lot of time of frustration, though. That's a shame, because I was looking at picking it up. Like, you know, after it had all blown over and it was just maybe maybe a stable game, I would have might, might have enjoyed it, but I think I'll leave it. The thing well, was, I they think... stabilised next, um, and then they released this big new update with all these new features and rejigged everything again. Uh, okay. I don't Fair know. I, I, might, I might have a better opinion in a few weeks or a few months when they've patched it a few times, but is that is that the state of the world we're in now with games? Uh, Patch culture. The industry. Quick. Quick uh, internet connections ruined us, didn't it? Really? Let's go yeah. gold. There's no such thing now, is there? As making making a gold, a gold disc, disc. And, and that <laughs> it, and that's it. Yeah. You get yeah. an update if we happen to release a patch when that internet becomes a thing. <laughs> as long as you're not on console. Well, back then, mm. RJ forty fives weren't a thing. Anyway, <laughs> back when all the fields were green, as as per. Every oh, other yeah. conversation I have these days because I'm always in the goggles. Yeah, back yeah. in my day. <laughs> right. So we haven't got much time really to go through these games that we're looking forward to. So let's try. Let's try our best to get through uh, some of them. I'm going to have. Um, I'm going to let Thorno start because because he's the guest. What are you looking forward to? What what's coming up or what do you want to read? Well, not so much what's what's coming up because I think you've really you discussed most things cyberpunk and things like that. Uh, so I'm looking forward to revisiting uh, Stalker series. Uh, it's one of my favourite FPS series, along with Quake, Half Life, um, and it, it's just for those who don't know, it's based around the Chernobyl disaster. Um, essentially, you're an unknown. Uh, you're just a guy who has amnesia, you don't know who you are, and you get given a um, a mission to go kill Strelok. So you're going to go kill Strelok. And it's all based in the... It's all based in the... Um, the zone, the, the exclusion zone of the Chernobyl disaster. So there's lots of weird things and mutations and awesome things going on. It's very Russian... Sukablia <laughs> and cheeky breaky and all that stuff. Um, Hard it's just around every corner. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic game, but I will be playing it with mods because that game without mods is as much as I love it. And I remember um, following it coming out from like two thousand and it came out two thousand six. Now I was following it from about two thousand and four, and it isn't the game that they said it was going to be. Um, but I will be playing the um, out Lost Alpha mod, which is actually what the original developers wanted the game to be. So what's the difference then between the base game and the Lost Alpha mod? 
just um, as a high level. I mean, I don't need to know. Right, there's yeah, an extra it's... box at Canard coordinate 64 <laughs> by 42. <laughs> there's a lot more levels. There's, the areas are much bigger. So originally, the the entire area of the zone was supposed to be um, you were supposed to be able to get round it. They've filled the majority of that in now. So there's the the, area, the actual zone. The, the instances for each area are much much bigger. Um, there's a lot more zombies. Uh, not zombies. Uh, mutants. Uh, a lot more uh, anomalies, which are just random anomalies that can kill you. Um, a lot more items. There's also vehicles back in as well. Um, it's just there's a lot of things. Uh, the AI is a lot harder as well because the, originally the, the they had to tone down the AI quite a bit because it was too too hard. <laughs> it, just, they couldn't do it. I just reminded myself of the game just before uh, just before the show because uh, I knew you were going to talk about it. And I went up to there was I'm playing Shadow of Chernobyl the first is that yeah. the first one. Yeah. Shadow Shinobu was the first one. Um, so I came out of the amnesia bit, got the mission, went out, spoke to a dude, he gave me a gun, uh, and then I found some dogs under a uh, tunnel. Bridge. In a t- yeah, yeah, under a bridge. Killed them with my knife. They didn't seem to bother. They didn't seem to be my- the mind at all. I just killed them. <laughs> and then, That's yeah. life in the Ukraine, Chris. <laughs> and, I walked, <laughs> and I walked into the forest and this uh, walked right up to this guy and he didn't, didn't have like a talk icon. And I and he just turned round, looked at me for about two or three seconds, and then shotgunned me in the face. <laughs> it, it took a while for him to realise, you know, looking at me direct that he wanted to kill me. Yeah. And Ooh. then I, I reloaded, went back and did him, and tried to shoot him from a distance with my pistol and missed every shot. Nearly emptied an entire round into him. And then kind of that's that's when we started the show. So I didn't get much more <laughs> experience than that. I did play it a little bit more back in the day, but not a lord, if you know what I mean. And I can't yeah, remember which one I played. Which one would you recommend? Um, they're all so. If if you want to play the base game and you want to get the story, play all of them in order. So you'll go Shadow Chernobyl, uh, Clear Sky, then Call of Pripyat, but play them with the complete mods on. So okay. moddb.com complete mod for each one, and it it basically fixes everything you've just spoken about. It fixes <laughs> the guns so they're actually usable now. Um, it adds in a lot of nice like uh, things. It makes the X-ray engine look quite nice. Um, fixes some of the pathfinding, some of the AI, um, because they they had to turn a lot of that stuff down. And then they were because they were so far behind schedules, it kept getting delayed. They rushed a lot of it. So things like the AI that that got turned down, they were trying to rebuild, then just got rushed towards the end. So it it just it wasn't quite good it's it's a brilliant game but it's it's a diamond in the rough sort of thing once it's modded though because it is an older game and there's plenty of like high texture mods i mean it came out in 2006 and you can make it look quite nice the x-ray engine is still some of the best atmospheric effects i've seen in any game today okay. and it's yeah you can make it look beautiful it looks all right yeah, i mean i put it in 4k as well which i didn't expect it to work off out the back yeah it's surprising me. how much the x-ray engine can do i say it was Built in the Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Next, uh, next game. So, Danny, what do you want to speak about this week? What are you looking forward to? Gears Five. Why? Because um, I'm a big fan of the Gear series. Right, I've always so, been a big fan of the Gear series. You're a big I, fan of. I, I am too. I loved one, two, and three on the yeah. 360. What was the yeah. first one on the normal Xbox? No, no, I don't think it was. It was, it was released. It was 360. At, it was a launch. It was a launch title. Yeah. Played it was also on the death. PC, which is the one I played. And it was a good PC game, but the port wasn't great. It needed a quad car, <laughs> which back in those days, no. Was, was this Gears 1? Yeah. For yeah, PC, I've heard bad things about that. So but... There wasn't multiplayer in one, was there? Yeah. Yeah. Or was there? I thought there, was. there were some distinct differences between 1 and 2, and 2 was like, yeah. No, nice. 2 introduced Horde mode. That was the difference. Right. Because oh. um, I played the sh- I played the everything shit out of the first one. That was what got me into literally plugging like an Ethernet cable that was taut around door frames and stuff to my computer. I used internet connection sharing from the computer to bridge a Wi-Fi adapter to downstairs. Jeez, that shit was just insane. That's the... <laughs> pinnacle of my network hack engineering off, off. <laughs> <laughs> pinnacle of my network engineering career when i was like 13 now i played it like so much i just like i played the story and like smashed that because you have a few days off like around christmas 
<laughs> really enjoyed the story. Specifically and, uh, around Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> That's how old I was when I started playing games. You play for the entire year. Gears of War every <laughs> night, constantly. No, 24, 20, 18 hours a day, Gears of War. Christmas, have a, hang on, hang on. Five minutes. Five minutes. Christmas take, lunch, take. Gears of War. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got it. I, I got it with my Xbox at Christmas, and I played the campaign through. It took me a couple of days to get through, and then I was just like, "Oh, it's got multiplayer." But I've never really played multiplayer, and it was literally, it was an insane experience. And I just loved the the flow of the game with the multiplayer, and just took that through all of the one, two, and three. It just took me on to each one. I haven't played four, but it's included in the Microsoft Game Store Pass, which I think I'm going to do, and I'm going to get you just get it played. Just so it's I know, not cause... available anywhere else, so is it? It's just on no, the Microsoft Store. That's the problem. But Gears um, Five is coming it's out. Microsoft on Steam. game, though, isn't it? Yeah, say that again. Sorry, Thunder. It's a Microsoft game, though. So. Yeah, it's by them. Yeah, well, exclusivity. Um, but I've just. I know they've changed. The developers have changed because it used to be Epic for the first three, and then it's like the well, what are they called? The Is developers it, what, and the Microsoft, the coalition, the, studio. the coalition now develop. They developed four, and they're doing five as well. They've had four different it. names, haven't they? The coalition, Black Rock, or something like that. They were called previous to this, right? Okay. They, they, they were they were they started off doing um, ports of games, and they were they're a Microsoft studio still, I think, um, but they are they might even be separate now. I'm not sure. Okay, um, but yeah, I just enjoyed the story quite a lot, and I Gears is one of those games where I do take it for the story first and take the multiplayer as a bonus. I generally know what I'm walking into with a Gears game. They're not changing that much with it. Gears 5, they're doing an arcade mode in there, which is very different to how you'd expect a Gears multiplayer game to go, but the arcade mode is its own entity, as it were. They've still got the old-style Gears games. But basically, they're changing the flow with the arcade mode where you don't start off with a Nasher shotgun, which definitely changes the dynamic of the game. Um, but you can go back to the old modes. And it just looks to see, keep the same aesthetic as, as it always has. And I just I just absolutely love the games. With the exception of the Quake series, name a better shotgun in a game than the Gears. Oh. That is so satisfying to play with that, especially multiplayer when you go around that corner just... and your mate's there and you. Do you know? Oh, it was... Doom, perhaps. Oh no! Doom was maybe Doom was quite Doom. nice. You know. Not sure. It was that they did. Re... Yeah, they did really well with that. It, I it mean, Bullet the... Storm was pretty good. It was pretty satisfying Ooh. playing that. Yeah, but that was a good the, game. The something about the gears. It was it was if you got it right, one shot, no matter how much armor, no matter how much health I had, straight in the face, dead as fuck. Yeah. It's the thing um, with Gears though, Gears just had some very satisfying moments. It's why I quite enjoy, I played Gears three quite a lot on the Xbox. Um it was a, a hack back box though. Do you know what? Oh, 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 I have some sniper rifle. I have some yeah. Oh the long shot. Very, yeah. very satisfying that, moments in that, Gears Three. That's what it was for me, though. Like you know, with the first the first gears, they they had it right with the amount of uh, weapons available on a field, and it was about map control. Now I've said before in the past with games like Quake and stuff, because it, I'm new to it, map control is not really my thing. But with a with gears, because I've st stuck with it from the beginning, I'm generally okay with the map control and the weapons and camping them and stuff. And they got it right. They had the boom shot, the talk bow, the long shot. Then you had your normal weapons. You could have the Nasher, uh, the Lancer, the Hammer Burst, and you, you, you know your general starting pool of weapons. It was enough. You weren't dealing with a million and one different things. You knew what was generally coming. It's just like, oh, he's got a long shot. Shit, get behind cover, kind of thing. And and it just it just progressed from there a little bit, didn't it? With a Hammer of Dawn, and they started doing a few extra weapons oh, yeah. in two and three. The grenades it, as well. Oh, the grenades, grenades and they introduced so grenade tagging, satisfying. and it just kept the pace of the game. I've going. got nothing bad to say about the Gears of War games. I, I don't, don't think either. I have. No, like, I back think... in the day, I didn't. I was like, "Oh, PC game is better." So Gears is shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did. I said the same with Halo, but I loved Halo One. So I'm not even a um, massive fan of the Gears games. That's the no, thing. I just I, really, really like them. They are stellar games. They really the single, are. The single player is emotional. It's it's it drives you to want to complete the game. You care about all of the. The characters, oddly yeah. gruff characters that I would not oh, yeah. give a crap about. You expect it to be all man, 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 especially with how the characters oh, look. But the yeah, it's it was actually it was quite a good story. It's yeah, really amazing. It's amazing how much emotion you can get out of a set of walking fridges like that. I know. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but it stuck with. <laughs> 
One thing that I did realize is I think did it it was around the time of Unreal Tournament 3 Black Edition the gears yeah. release and a lot of the similarities between the size of the characters and the it was pieces every of armor unreal, and stuff. It was like every, every unreal, unreal game. game. Yeah, they all were massive dudes with muscles massive. thicker than me. And it was just that aesthetic, and it was just like, okay, so I kind of see where they're going with it now. And they've kept it. The coalition have kept that kind of look with it. And yeah, I think I'm going to pick Gears 4 up and then pick up 5. Even if it is a bit expensive, I feel like they deserve my money with it. Because I'm going to have to get a ge Game so Pass again. I mean, you've got me How on wet. You've got pass? me on wet <laughs> Gears of War again. Because I played, <laughs> I played 1, 2, and 3, and I, I nearly got the... There was a 360 kind of spin-off game with it the was... blonde guy. Is it Judgment or something like that? That sounds right. Gears of War. I, I didn't get Bet. that, and then I kind of lost the plot around for. I didn't. I wasn't really that interested, and I haven't got a, a, a Xbox One. And I was. I always think about Gears as console games, but it's on Microsoft Store. I might have to go and get it. See, that's the thing with it. Like, How much I did is have pass? a. It's uh, is it, eight, is it, it twelve quid a month. It's about thirteen. Yeah, about thirteen. Last time I had one, I got I was one for buy, I was literally going to. Yeah, I was literally going to buy one just before I came on. Just, just have like, you played yeah, Sea of Thieves, by the way? I have it's five pound at the have... moment. Oh, is it? Oh. Nice. So I did it, play Sea of Thieves. That's what I got the Game Pass for, and I was going to play Gears Four with it, and then just never got onto it because I only wanted exactly. it. For like... <laughs> I, <laughs> I, like... I downloaded it. I got it installed on my PC, and then I thought, oh, I hate the Xbox Live Store. I'm going to delete <laughs> it off my computer. And I'm not going to renew <laughs> my pass, um, but I might have to. If you want to play that, I am up for that. Gears, can you yeah, can you co up the the single player? You should be able to if they're keeping to their uh, standards. Yeah, they did it in past ones, didn't they? Yep, yeah, you should be able to. Are you up I, for that? I'm definitely up for that because oh. I. Uh, I'll I'll play Gears. Yeah. Oh, I got. To tell you what, though, you know, like everyone's like, well, if, if anybody talks about my, behind my back about how I am with games, it'll be like, Dens isn't that good. Well, get me on Gears of War and I'll fucking annihilate you. <laughs> I, I, I got that good at that game. Like, I really, really enjoyed it. It was it was a staple of my... I, I played with a group Obviously. of lads that I used to go out drinking with and they, you know, they're all, you know, you know, lads are like, they're all very who are and, you know, in, in, I, I, I'm not that kind of lad, but... I really, really enjoy playing with them, and I was I I got to a point where I was probably much better than everybody else, but it was beside the point. It was still thrilling. Every single match I played with them was thrilling, and yeah, I'm up for that. I, I'd play that. I think on a last ending note, I think what made it so special really was the the cover system at the start of the game was like shit. I'm getting damaged. Take cover. And then it morphed into something else. It was like, cool, look at all this cover I can use to move around the map rapidly and blast my way through. And that's what it kind of morphed into. It's sort of like a dual use system that the better you got, the more you could utilize it. And I loved it. And there was none of this janky kind of getting stuck on a corner or, or get, you know, going around so the corner cool. by accident. And, you know, like the horrible, horrible like cover systems that you see in a lot of console games. Yeah. There's none of that. There's well, some of it. It was so it fluid. Was, it was well, enough to let it slide. It was, I was on the odd few. It was on the odd few. <laughs> I am good at it, don't, don't you worry. Have you played uh, it, Matt? You've been very quiet. I have. I bet you thought my audio had died again. No, <laughs> I played the first two, and I used to play a lot of um, a lot of the multiplayer online because one of my friends, like he just hammered it every night. So I'd he would basically play that or sit and play with myself, but um <laughs> And it just, yeah, uh, that's <laughs> all I remember. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was great. I loved it, and we should get on it. Simple as that. Anything yeah. specific about the new game though that you're excited about? There's more one shotguns. That... What? Sorry. More shotguns. <laughs> dual shotguns. Dual wielded shot... as if you need them. No, just a bigger shotgun. <laughs> the, the one thing that I I noticed when I just watched the um, uh, the marketing trailers is the deployables. That seems like a new mechanic. So I've not seen mm. too much on the deployables. I have seen the fact that they're going further afield with the colour palettes and scenery and stuff like that. Oh, they always oh. go about greys and browns and stuff in yeah, the greys and what, but I don't care. Just, just fucking play the game. It's a nice, pretty oh. environment. Okay, it's brown. I play quick, for God's sake. It's part yeah. of the fun, though. You, you expect it to be like a dank toilet when you play it. It just wants to be gr <laughs> like gritty and filthy. Yeah, that was the meme back in the day, though. It was like, oh, Gears of War, brown. <laughs> <laughs> Gears of War, RTX. <laughs> anyway, right, moving on. Um, Matt, what are you playing? Hi. Or what do you want to play? What are you looking forward to? 
something I came across a couple of days ago while browsing YouTube. Metal Wolf Chaos XD. Have any of you guys played this or heard much about it? Not not the new one, but the original I played. Uh, not a lot, it, but I, I did get. I think I rented it. In fact, on the PlayStation One, wasn't it? Sounds this, Japanese. Um, it was Xbox. It was from Soft. Oh. From Software. Sorry, before Dark Souls and <laughs> yeah. Maybe it was Xbox um, then, but I, I do remember renting it. I think they did Armored Core as well, didn't they? They did. This came after this Armored Core. Fantastic it, series. It's another mech game, but um, under genre, I've just put America, because basically <laughs> the entire story is fucked. The story is <laughs> you are the president of the US, and your second in command attempts a coup d'etat to take over the White House, so you get a mech suit. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> you just get a mech mechs. suit. And then you erupt from the White House and start reclaiming America as the president <laughs> in a mech suit. And the translations are awful. And everything about it is just so overdone and patriotic. And I love it. I just love it so much. <laughs> it's uh, uh, I, I said I played, I played the, the... I can't remember the story, though. I've obviously blanked that from my mind. The story is America. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't I want matter. to play this game. <laughs> is it coming out or is it out? It's it's, it's out, out now. So it originally came out in two thousand four, um, specifically in Japan for the Xbox, which was struggling at the time, and it never made it really over here, other than like as a cult following sort of thing. Mm. But it was picked up um, and remastered by Devolver Digital, and it Devolver came out... Digital. Yeah. Um, why? Why do I? If I played it, then maybe I played it on a like my retro pie or something. I definitely played the game. I just. Maybe I'm mixing it up with Armored Core or another mech game similar to that. But I Maybe so. I Do you play know. as the president in Armored Core? <laughs> I can't remember. I honestly <laughs> can, genuinely cannot remember. I'm not that into those kind of games, but I've played it. I've played something like that. It, <clears throat> it just looks like the sort of thing where I would enjoy every second of it because of how stupid every bit of it is. And I am so excited to pick it up and play it. <laughs> I think I'm going to get it. It looks nice. pretty sweet. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Has it got co-op? Over to so, IPX SPX. No, it has no. There's only one president, Chris. This isn't silly. <laughs> can I not God. play as the, the, the vice president? Like, as no, he's the, the bad old... guy. No, but can I not play Keep as the bad up. guy? Keep up. Sorry, God. You can't hear it. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, the president, and you pick up this tank and slam it down, and everything explodes, and you've got missiles, and yeah, <laughs> that's why I want to play it. Cool. I feel like I'm two years old explaining this and I don't give a shit. Um, can I have it for Christmas? Why? Because you pick up a tank and missiles. And then you go to space and you pick up a space tank and missiles. <laughs> Funnily enough, the reviews on this are literally just saying, finally, an armor core game on PC. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to pick it up. Oh, definitely one to watch out Interesting. for. Interesting, it's developed by FromSoft, though. So was it one of their first games? Um, I don't think it was one of the first games, but it was definitely before they became as famous as they are today, mm. at least, you know, with the Western world. But um, I think, I'm not sure exactly where it comes in the lineup, but it, it's, it is, again, like I say, it's after the Armored Core, so it's not like it's the first mech game. It's just, it, it's, it's what the it is. Is that a smiley PC. face, by the way, at the end of the, at the end of the title, XD? Is that like the smiley face XD, or is it? does it stand for extra definition... I think it stands for... It could be both. Extra it's... demolition, death, extra... It, it, uh, yeah. It extra Donald. Donald. <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see can't the mods. <laughs> he needs a mech suit to get up and walk around. Oh, right. oh, We're going to make America great again. One <laughs> mech suit at a time. I don't I don't feel like I want to follow this with my game because it's boring in comparison to the last time. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to skip Chris's game and we're going to go straight into a stream where we all play Metal Wolf Chaos. Yes. <laughs> oh, you know what? We are, we are running well overdue over time, so I'm going to use my game for next week. Let's, let's not use it, because I do honestly genuinely feel like I'm coming on after a, a really yeah. decent <laughs> comedy act. And uh, this now. So, Hardware Hot Pants, we haven't got anything to talk about. Nobody's got new hardware. Nobody's released anything. Or oh, you don't care about anything. Nothing I've seen that I care about. Uh, yeah, good. Thano's selling a server, if that counts. Uh, I'm selling <laughs> yeah. a 980, 980 GTX <laughs> for a fiver. Hardware. Tools, tools on that. Tools on that. <laughs> okay, so 
Might as well close the show then. In that case, we haven't got anything else to, to discuss. So thank you very much for everybody. That is the end of the show. Um, thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time on Resonance Arcade. Thank you very much to Thorno for coming along and injecting one or two sentences into the conversation. It's always a pleasure, and hopefully yep. we'll have you back at some point in the future. Yeah, thanks for having me. And have you got anything to pimp? Anything to promote? Uh, just the usual, just LAN ops. If you like gaming and LAN parties, lanops.co.uk. Just check that shit out. <laughs> we do LAN parties in, I think it's Chesterfield now, just south of Sheff- Sheffield. I it, think you'd know. It, uh, you'd uh, know I don't even know where my next event is. It's it's terrible. <laughs> I know, um, I know, because I'm actually not, for it's, once coming to the it's next event. October. <laughs> um, the fifth, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's, it's around that day. It's, it's <laughs> October the fourth. The next event. We still got some tickets available. Thirty-five quid ahead. Um, yeah, that's it's always good. Really discount pizza else. as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, we get fifty percent off Domino's. Yeah, which is it's, very nice. Yeah, it's, a it's worth coming for the pizza. Life. And it's a staple of my social life now. So yeah, right. what, Domino's we... pizza. No, so <laughs> are we going to get? A, are we going to get a couch co-op competition going on? You know, with things Ooh. like Ultimate Chicken Horse and Mount Your Friends and that kind of thing. It's and not Dick like Joust. Dick, Dick, Dick Joust. Uh, yeah, I've not played that, but yeah, that'll do. Oh, genital, genital Joust. Genital Joust. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we could do, actually. Yeah, that'll, be, that'll, that'll be, be pretty good. good. And I'll probably beat everybody, so. Ooh, all right. Yeah. 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 Ooh, ooh. Gears of War 4, boys, what? <clears throat> Quick, I've still got my Xbox Pass by then. I'm buying it straight after this. <laughs> I've expired. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah you can watch all of our shows on youtube.com forward slash resonance arcade and visit our website at resonancearcade.com where you can find info about the uh, show and links to all of our social channels you can follow us on twitter at resonance arcade where we publish show announcements and news and finally you should join us in discord on discord.resonancearcade.com where we hang out and discuss all things gaming and america as of now it is now an american themed discord you can't come in unless you've got a green card you can't come in unless you've got a mech suit and you are the pr- uh, Prime Minister of the United States. But what the fuck am only, I? On? Only one person can come in then because we've only got one Prime Minister, apparently. <laughs> all right, right anyway. All right. So, few of you can come in. <laughs> all that's left is to say goodbye. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you all next time. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.